Um, hi, uh, my name is Rennie Gleason. I head up uh, Global Interactive Strategy at Wyden and Kennedy, which is why I am actually sitting in Helsinki right now. Uh, in fact, not only am I sitting in Helsinki, I'm actually sleeping in Helsinki because it is 14 hours ahead of you. So mark your watch right now and you'll get a sense of, of what's going on. I wanted to uh, thank you for the opportunity to address you here uh, at the PSU Internet Marketing Conference. Uh, I desperately wish uh, I was there as well. Um, if for no other reason than I hate sitting down and they made me sit down in the camera so that you could see me. Um, but I, it, all of this stuff is so interesting to talk about. I wish we were talking rather than you just listening to me. But thank you for the opportunity to talk uh, at you uh, briefly. I wanted to start off, um, what, what, what the hope is here uh, is that perhaps we can set some context for what you're going to be seeing, hearing, and thinking about, hopefully, over the next couple of hours uh, at this conference. Um, I'm going to share with you some of the questions that we uh, tackle uh, at Widen and Kennedy on behalf of the brands that we work for. And you will be hearing a lot about those specific uh, tactics and strategies and things from various speakers uh, this afternoon. But I wanted to share with you uh, first, just kind of taking a step back, the landscape that we're all sort of doing this in. Um, because darn, it's, it's hard. Um, it's, uh, it's a real challenge to figure out what to make of everything that's going on. It is absolutely, take, take a deep breath, it is impossible to keep up with everything. It is um, impossible to have all the right answers. Um, the best we can hope for, the best I hope for, um, and I think I just hit my microphone, the best we can hope for is that we ask the right questions. Uh, as we go into figuring out how to tackle this space on behalf of our brands, on behalf of ourselves, on behalf of um, our culture. And so I wanted to share with you sort of three uh, big things that are happening um, out there. And the first one is that with the proliferation of um, booklets and laptops and mobile devices and, and, and the prevalence of context-aware information, everything can be tagged, everything can be geolocated, things can be IP targeted, uh, we can behavioral target, we can target up the wazoo. So, so we know more, and we can know more, and we can address communications directly to you in ways that are meaningful to you and at, uh, at the right time of day and the right flavor of ice cream and you name it. But that's all wonderful, but as marketers, we are resource constrained. In a world of limitless possibility, our checkbooks are not limitless. So what hopefully by asking the right questions, we can get to answers that help us focus. Um, the second thing is, that with all that geotagging, the data streams that we leave behind, the amount of information um, that you generate by logging onto Twitter, by accessing your Facebook account, by turning on your mobile device, by uh, uh, you know, accessing your, your TV, your cable box, you name it, is, is, is magnifying exponentially every single day. And everyone will tell you, oh great, it's all analyzable, it's all quantifiable, we've never had better performance marketing possibilities than, than, than that. Well, that's true, but in the midst of all that, with all that information, there's also a heck of a lot more noise. And so we have to figure out how we cut through that to find out what are the bits and pieces that are actually meaningful to your business, um, to our brands. Um, and and that, that is a challenge. I'll tell you, every single day, um, we're, we're, right now I'm talking to you from the, the Widening Kennedy office here, here in Portland on, on 13th Ave between Cooch and Davis. And I'm surrounded. I'm in a building full of people who are wrestling every day painfully with just literally, what do we do? We, we've got a product to sell. Um, so are we going to Facebook that? Are we going to Twitter that? Are we going to uh, develop a YouTube channel and pump that out? Are we going to drop something into 12-second TV? Are we going to um, uh, put blinking LED Arduino-enabled uh, uh, boxes underneath bridges in Boston? Bad idea. Uh, you know, how, how do we grapple with this? It's not easy. 
uh, and, and we don't have answers, but, but we wrestle with that every day. So in, the, in that information-rich environment, there's, there's a lot of noise, so how do you cut through? That's, that's the second big um, pillar. And then the third big pillar is you will be surrounded with raving, frothing uh, lunatics like myself who believe messianically in the opportunities and possibilities of this medium. We will be so enthusiastic, we will be so energetic, we will have so much information, we will absolutely overwhelm you. That's part of, uh, part of our job, that's what happens in this space. There, there is so much you can do that the logical human emotional reaction to that is absolute panic. And it's not entirely unwarranted. Because if you, if you tried to do everything every single day that you could possibly do, you will explode. And so in, in that environment, in an environment where there's more, um, we know more about you than we've ever known. We know more about where you are and what you do and your behaviors and things like that. We know, um, we can track performance. We can see what you clicked on, what you did. What, we can see what you're searching for live on, on practically on Google and Twitter trends and all this stuff. But what do we do with that to boil it down into something that actually achieves marketing objectives? That's the challenge that we have. And hopefully, uh, You'll get some answers to some of the questions uh, that you have in your heads over the course of this afternoon, talking with some really smart folks. Um, so with that, what, what I would like to do to, to begin this uh, process is share with you some of the questions that we ask um, each day before we try to solve uh, the client challenge that we have on our plate. One of the things that we're uh, excited about and are going to try and experiment with today uh, here with you um, is that in spite of me being asleep right now in Helsinki, uh, dreaming about pickled herring, um, I will be available uh, alive, awake, uh, towards the end of today. So when John uh, finishes his video presentation later, I am hopeful that he will be kind enough to uh, share uh, with us either we can launch TweetDeck and exchange some information. My Twitter handle is at rgleason, or maybe, ooh, we might actually do a Skype chat and try to uh, address some of your questions and uh, observations, thoughts, comments live. So thank you, looking forward to that, and uh, again, thanks for having me virtually. The first question that we ask uh, is a seemingly basic one that seems to get ignored uh, a lot until very late in the process. And that question is, what exactly are we trying to accomplish in this particular objective, uh, in this particular campaign, at this particular moment, with this particular execution? What product are we trying to sell? Uh, what, what is effectively um, success? And if you don't know what success is when you start, then you don't really have a good way to determine whether or not what you're doing is going to meet those objectives. And also, at the end of the day, after you've burnt those dollars, which aren't coming back, uh, did you get closer to your goal? Um, the only way you know is if you have a goal. And so the first thing we start with is, what exactly are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to affect brand sentiment? Are we trying to sell product? Are we trying to um, improve uh, purchase intent? Uh, all those things will dictate different creative solutions and different vehicles um, that we can use. So that's the first question we ask. What is it exactly that we're trying to do? As a, a second piece to that, not only what are we trying to do, but as the communication effort rolls out, how are we monitoring success of that? How are we adapting and evolving what we're doing based on that? So uh, there's what are we trying to achieve, and then there's also how will we incorporate the learnings as our campaigns roll out to, to be smarter and achieve those objectives on the fly. The second thing that we ask um, is, how's the water out there? Uh, the notion that we are going to create a new conversation is, frankly, at this point, insane. Uh, for any brand that we work for, uh, for any business objective you have, there's probably conversations already taking place around that out there. Ideally, you're meeting a need that people have, or there's a need that you've identified, or in uh, you know, Coca-Cola, uh, Nokia, uh, Nike, we are, we are entering into a pre-existing conversation. And so the first thing that we ask is, what is that conversation? What's the temperature and tenor of the conversations that are happening? Um, what are we wading into? You know, if we're going to roll out and say that things are going great, are they? Um, because there is a, um, the, the transparency, the immediacy with which people can call 
bullshit, basically, on whatever you say versus what's the, what, what the reality is, is now down to nanoseconds. So you need to understand what the context is that you're rolling out um, into. You also need, as you're looking at, because that leads to a lot of sentiment tracking, conversation and buzz monitoring, et cetera, two interesting things. One is that Google index is only a very small portion of the web. And so you have to understand that when you go out and you start to search uh, for what people are saying about your brand or about your products, uh, you're only getting part of the story. Uh, the dark net, you know, IRC chat rooms, all, all of these other places, um, your, your, uh, uh, there's a lot of conversation going on. So understand that you're coming in looking at a prism even when you do intelligently look at what people are um, already saying. But the second thing you have to think about is when you find out what they're saying, are you interpreting it properly? Uh, the example that, that hopefully is on your screen is what, we, what in China is called Mars language. And it's a new language that's been created by teens and youth uh, in China that mixes Chinese characters, emoticons, and um, uh, English language words. For somebody over the age of 18, it is incomprehensible. So you may see the conversation happening and have absolutely no idea what's actually happening within it. So being able to identify what the conversation is the tone and tenor of that conversation, and then being able to interpret that properly is the second big question that we ask. How, how's, how's the water? The third question we ask, um, with many of the companies that we work with, there are a lot of different people. D interactive and digital media is so hard to define. Um, you may have somebody working on your mobile strategy. You may have somebody working on your video game strategy. You may have somebody working on your social media strategy. And you may think that those are separate things. Um, but they're not. They're all interrelated. Um, and so we, we call this, what's your, what's your right hand doing right now? Oftentimes companies are already engaged in this space or doing certain things. And so the first audit that we do is literally what, what are you already doing? How are you already participating? So that you don't trip over yourself um, out there in the, uh, in, the, in the public sphere. The next question we ask, uh, and I think if you're keeping track, we're up to uh, number four. Uh, the fourth question we ask is, what conversations or actions am I hoping to inspire? So uh, b by that, historically, we used to make an ad. We used to make a piece of film. And that would um, attempt to you know, make, make you feel uh, something. Now, we need, the ad used to be the end point of the process. Now, the conversation is the beginning of the process. And so what we're, what we're asking ourselves is, what, what are we hoping, if, if we are successful with this campaign, what will people be talking about? Um, the key here is also being flexible, because you, you, you know, it may go in a different direction. You need to be prepared for that, too. So uh, what conversations or actions are we hoping to inspire also gives you uh, a way to get back to your uh, metrics. The next question we ask, and uh, this is basically you're entering into a place where pe people's needs are already being met. Um, you're, you're coming into that space and you're attempting to sell them something new. You're trying to change uh, their behavior to buy more of your product, your services, your uh, stuff. And so you need to ask yourself the need that you're looking to fill. How are they currently, how is your target currently fulfilling that need uh, out there? Um, but by way of example, we're showing this is uh, in, in Tokyo where uh, on the signpost, the street, uh, lights. There's a semicode that allows you, a QR code actually in, in Japan, uh, when you snap it, it will pop your location and pin it on a map so that you are never lost. Um, so that's, that's one way that they're keeping themselves from, from ever being uh, uh, lost out there. Now, we also were very interested in the intersection of uh, where technology can meet human needs. Um, this is an example of a Hello Kitty uh, massager. So when we talk about needs, we're talking about emotional, we're talking about rational, and we're talking about physical. Uh, so what role can your brand play uh, in that space? Here uh, in China, uh, there is a whole shy culture, sharing uh, culture. In this case, there's an entire industry around selling uh, underwear, uh, uh, used underwear, preferably, uh, online. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the need that you can fulfill and how are people fulfilling it now so that you can talk intelligently about what your solution for them uh, can be. And lastly, I'm just showing one example. Uh, we did some work uh, at Wyden with a, with a 
entrepreneur named Ken Banks who created Frontline SMS, which was a text-based messaging system for uh, emerging markets. Uh, it's using SMS to communicate over um, via laptop with thousands of mobile devices. The interesting challenge we had as a branding campaign was how do you uh, fulfill a need? The need that is being fulfilled is communication via SMS. How do you brand effectively a vehicle using only SMS messages? Uh, if you're asking people to participate in your brand and in your idea, then one of the questions you want to ask yourself is both what, what, what does that participation look like? Um, how will they engage in your idea? How will they engage in your brand? But also, what ultimately is all of that engagement laddering up to? Because very often in the space we see a lot of tactics deployed purely because you can, not because they necessarily add up. And back to that point of looking at social or mobile or you know, any one of these things in silos, for anybody out there who isn't in marketing, there is no distinction. Your brand is uh, constant across those points, and every touch point adds up to something. And that something just so happens to be your brand. And so the real question that we pose is not just how do we get people to participate, but what does that participation actually ladder up to? What does it mean in terms of the brand? Because what you're really asking them to do is not just participate in your com campaign, you're asking them to participate in building your brand. The next question. Um, everybody wants to be social. Everybody feels like they need to be something in social media. And we oftentimes ask our clients, well, OK, before you social, uh, practice safe social, um, understand what it is that you are looking for out of it and how you'll support it. So when we ask, if you're going to be social, one of the first questions is, how dynamic can you be? Because with many of our clients, uh, they'd like to be on Facebook. But the challenge is that before they can respond to a user post uh, or a question uh, or a query, they have to go through legal. Uh, when you're expecting a response time of about 3 to 12 minutes, uh, a day's turnaround time for legal to approve, and that's on a, on a good day, that's not being social. That's playing a game of telephone. And so we, we push ourselves and our clients to identify, are there resources internally that we can align uh, with? Um, how will they be supported, and how will the organization allow those people to actually have a, um, a real voice? And I think one of the important questions there that, that you need to ask yourselves as a brand is who, as we move away from sort of the notion of ownership of a brand to alignment, basically brand alignment with people uh, who are living brand attributes, um, or, or their spirit is aligned with the brand. You, you move from ownership to alignment, and the question then becomes not who within your organization necessarily um, best uh, illustrates or exemplifies the brand voice, but also who outside might do that. Um, and, and how do you bring those folks together? Uh, to, to, you can't control the conversation, but you can choose who you will showcase and who you will highlight. Um, the next question that that leads to is, so what does your brand sound like one-on-one? -on -one? Because historically in advertising, um, the, the planner's job was to identify what the brand's voice was. But that also was then expressed through broadcast medium. So now you really have to ask yourself, what, when somebody hits you on Twitter or posts on Facebook or um, hits you on Get Satisfaction or any number of different vehicles that they can use to touch your brand, What's the tone? What's the tenor? How do you interact one-on-one -on -one with your user? And how do you scale that interaction? The next question we ask is, how are you findable? Um, you, you'll hear a lot about clutter. You'll hear a lot about sort of channel uh, confusion. You'll hear a lot. Um, there, there is so much you can do. Um, and, and oftentimes, a failed campaign will focus on, oh, this is what we're going to get people to do. This is, you know, we're going to have them generate this stuff. And then, but, and then nobody actually thinks about, well, how are we actually going to get them? there? How will they learn about our campaign? Um, and this isn't just interactive. This is offline. What are the experiences you're going to create? Um, how are you going to cut through? Uh, what, when, when you're developing your microsite or when you're developing your communications, ask yourself, what will someone type into Google? Because if you're successful, they will type something into Google to try to find you. Uh, so if you're thinking about that up front, how, how will I be findable? How do I make myself uh, findable? 
that will complement your proactive strategy with a with the sort of um, a sustenance, a, a sustaining element to the to the conversation. The next question we ask is, how does the brand experience? And you could say campaign, but in in our mind, the campaigns just ladder up to the brand experience. But how does that brand experience evolve over time for each user um, as they go through it? So only three questions left. You're doing very well. Um, we ask ourselves, what, what is the value? Because if, if you're asking somebody, back to the clutter and how you're making yourself findable, if you're asking somebody to give up time to engage with your brand, what are they getting in return? Uh, and that value can be anything from social acknowledgement. It could be uh, loyalty rewards. It could be a badge for their page. I mean, for God's sake, Foursquare offers me no reward other than ludicrously simplistic um, uh, uh, badges when I uh, uh, check in at, at all these places, and yet I'm freaking obsessive compulsive about it now. Literally, my, my kids turn to me when we go to a we go to a restaurant and we're you know waiting to sit down. Like, oh, hold on, I I just have to do four. It's you know the the um, this is it gets interesting because you can start applying game dynamics and social dynamics and social currency and all those great buzzwords. But at the end of the day, what are you giving them? What do they walk away from the experience with your brand with that properly values the engagement that they've given you? Um, and as an adjunct to that, uh, what value are you hoping they will provide to you by doing that? Are you, you, know, are you doing more sale? Are they becoming a, um, a propagator for you? Uh, are they syndicating content out through their feeds? So it's, it's kind of a two-way street, but you do need to ask yourself, what, what, given all the other things they could be doing, and all the other companies they could be interacting with, and all the other stuff they could be doing right now, what do they get for doing it with you? Is love easy? Uh, Cutting through all the sort of markety, speakety, internet buzzity stuff. Um, if you've answered all these questions, and if you've created some kind of emotional resonance for somebody, you've met a need, you've accomplished something with them, you've made them feel good about your brand uh, and your product, how are you helping them share that? Because at the end of the day, the word of mouth and those communications, that, that social sharing is what's going to make or break you. Uh, that's what's going to help you scale. That's what helps you jump from cult following to, to mass uh, awareness. So are you doing everything in your power with the dollars that you spend to make sure that whatever you do is shareable, is syndicatable, is uh, ownable by the folks that you're uh, hoping to inspire? Oh, oh, wait, one moment. It appears I have a uh, call coming in on my multimedia computing device made by Nokia. When we talk about the sharing, it's, it's fascinating because this is, this is not, it's interesting because I, I have an opportunity to look around at a, at a lot of different markets. I'm in Helsinki now, but this is a, you know, in, in the U.S. we talk about I share, therefore I am, of people's identity being created through the content that they share. Um, you know, this is, if you go into Flickr, you can find this image of the U.S. social media prison with all the different things that have been built to enable people to share. Um, what's fascinating is there's a parallel phenomenon going on in places like China. Um, where the, the term is shy, uh, I shy, therefore I am, which is literally this sort of over mass indexing of, of uh, property. Comic books, uh, you saw the underwear before. In fact, this is the young lady who catalogs her underwear collection online. Uh, gift cards, uh, sneakers and toys. And here's the Chinese social media prism, which shockingly looks quite similar because as human beings, sharing and identity interaction is so uh, important to us. So just... Please, if, if you've gone to all this effort to move somebody, make it easier, make it easy as possible for them to move somebody else on your behalf. And then the last question, you've survived. The last question uh, is the one that very often gets forgotten in a typical campaign-based uh, marketplace. And that's what happens next. So you're successful, you create a social movement. Uh, so when the funding stops, you pull in the plug on that, um, if you've gone out and gotten people to badge themselves in your, your, uh, your ARG, what happens next? If you've gotten them to download the screensaver ringtone wallpaper uh, app widget, widset, uh, applet, you name it, uh, then what? And so with every one of our campaigns, we try to think about um, two things. What is our uh, short-term objective? But also, what will happen to all those interactions? What will happen to the social capital we build? What's the migration strategy? 
for all those people that we engage in this so that the next time we roll out with product uh, B, we aren't building an entire campaign from scratch. We are reactivating passion communities around the products that are uh, important around them and the experiences that are important around them. So uh, with that, thank you uh, for your time. And again, I'm sorry I can't be there. Uh, I would love to, uh, to, to be sitting there right now watching everybody scratch their heads and shake their fists uh, at me and Twitter about uh, uh, how incredibly dry and dull this was. But uh, thank you, and uh, I look forward to connecting with all of you, and hopefully that will be later today if John will let me. Thank you. Whoo! Let's all take a break. How about you go out to the lobby and try to find a delicious Coke product? Mmm. <sighs> Refreshing. So I'd love to take this opportunity to share with you something in our building here that may be uh, interesting uh, based on the conversation that we're having. Uh, so please, come with me. Come on. Everybody get up. Come on. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing out here? <laughs> Come on. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know how you keep getting ahead of me. you're here uh, today for the conference, just uh, 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 an ask, which is don't just listen to the folks up on stage who are telling you what they know. There's a lot to learn from the folks who are sitting around you all day long. Um, please ask each other questions, uh, push each other because you can, you can all help each other out. Uh, and even though nobody may have the answer, we can all help figure out what those answers are together. Thanks. Refreshing. Oh, oh, well, hey there. What I wanted to share with you was that here at Widen Kennedy, uh, Dan Wyden, our founder, had a, has a philosophy. And it's on a wall right there. The philosophy is fail harder. And he said to us that if you haven't failed three times, then you're actually, you're not going to work out. You're not good because you're not risking enough. And in this space where nothing is certain and everything is possible, we owe it to ourselves to, to try that. And if I was going to tweak it a little bit, I'd even say fail, fail smaller and fail more often because that's the only way you get better. Um, thank you. So shut up. Okay. Oh, oh well. Well, hello, Ponce. Hello, Ponce de Leon. This is uh, Rennie, and I'm just giving you a marker that we're going to reshoot the beginning um, right now. <sighs> Refreshing. So thank you. Looking forward to that. And uh, again, thanks for having me virtually. <laughs>